So my talk is going to be focusing on life, love, and renewal. And about, it's, a, it's about a youth summer program I created called Cycles of Life. And again, they introduced um, me. My name is Jake Rainbow World Bridger Foreman. And I use that uh, middle name, Rainbow World Bridger, because um, I come from many different backgrounds. My mother is from the Philippines, and my father was an absentee Shawnee, and also Scotch-Irish. How can we exercise the mind, body, and spirit? Well, the way that I figured out how to do that is to connect um, bicycling, gardening, and art. This is a picture of me riding to Zuni Pueblo for their <coughs> Elder's Day, and I, I did that in about a day and a half. It was 180 miles. I loved it. So when I put together the youth program, we also rode from Zuni Pueblo to Albuquerque, and we built our own bicycles. This is uh, me and our garden that we helped um, put together with the kids. And who here gardens? Raise their hand. You all have that, um, ever had that experience where you're about to kind of um, pick up all the kind of dead plants around you, get ready for the spring, and you find these plants that you didn't even know were there. And they're huge, and you're like, wow, I can't believe I grew this without even knowing. <laughs> so it's like, uh, this is a picture of an art show we did entitled Cycles, and we used um, recycled bicycle parts. Also, this um, mandala on the bottom is made out of seeds, and again, it's just representing cycles and using art as a way to um, further kind of spread this message that there's cycles in everything in life. And with the cycles, there's also elements that we all share. We all need healthy water, we all need healthy air, we need the fire, the light from the sun, we need the earth, and this is done in our own logo to show that. All of this is cycled in everything. And the foundation of this is that everything is in dynamic flux and it's impermanent. And we teach this to the kids. We also teach this idea of interdependence from everything from making our bicycles together, how the wheels need the chain, need the crank, need the rider, just as the soil needs the microorganisms to grow the plant, it needs the sun, it needs the water. And lastly, it's this idea of compounded phenomena. Everything's a combination of, of energy waves. Everything's a combination of these elements in life. So what does this mean? Well, this is not just a cute program about bicycling, gardening, and art. It's spreading a consciousness. And this is a basic call to consciousness. But what does that mean? It means to know well, to know thoroughly, to know all together. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about whole systems is how do we create youth education programs or anything that really deal with whole systems? Well, the way that I found out how to do that is using experiential education, using multi-sensory learning, not just from what we're learning in books, but really feeling it, seeing it, being a part of it, being an active participant. And also this idea of praxis, of connecting theory and practice, of education, action, and reflection. These are all cycles of learning. And, and for so long, I've only had this theory. Um, I'm a graduate student, right? We get so much theory, and we want to um, figure out how our research can really benefit the community. But how can we do that if we don't apply what we're learning to real world activities? Paulo Freire talks about this as the process by which students as empowered subjects achieve a deepening awareness of the social realities which shape their lives and discover their own capacities to recreate them. This has been such a powerful learning tool for myself and also for the students. Because you see, it not only benefits the students by creating a youth pro summer program like this, it benefits myself. Because I get the confidence to know that I can do something by myself. I can do something with people. I can work with people. And I'm connecting the university, what I'm learning in the university, to the community and vice versa. Because the community is also our learning laboratory. Lastly, we're so often times really focused on outcomes, right? Actions, technique, the kind of, um, the part that says, you know, what, what, what can you see? What are the measurable outcomes, right? You know, I'm sure we hear this a lot, right? How, can, how is this proven? How can we have evidence-based programs? And what I'm saying is that, yes, it's very important, right? But it's kind of like having the carriage before the horse or as I, I would like to say, having the bicycle without the rider. And what does the rider have? Well, the rider has the motivation, the intentions, the psyche, the kind of feeling of, I want to do something 
Not because someone's telling me to do something, but because I have the motivation. And we heard in this talks before, where does that motivation come from? And for me, that motivation come, came from my own spiritual understanding of understanding myself, my exalted self, as I would call it. So in the end, what are we creating? We're creating leaders for the 21st century. And I can't hesitate and say that, um, you know, I feel like a leader for the 21st century because I've gained the capacity for innovation by thinking outside of the box, right? We always say, you know, how can we think outside of the box? Well, yeah, what, what, who created this box in the first place? You know, and, where, and what's the history behind that? And again, in this program, we learn about that, of how did we get all of these kind of limitations in our mind? How did that happen? And for me, this, I, it really um, speaks to um, the history of colonization and oppression that so many people have felt, all of my relations have felt, actually. This social responsibility of knowing that because we're all interconnected and everything's interdependent, then yeah, I benefit from your benefit. You benefit from my benefit. And I love to use this mudra called the mudra of the Dharma Chakra because it represents equanimity. And that's meaning that I'm giving you all love and compassion, but at the same time, I'm giving myself love and compassion. This balance. And also this global vision. Uh, in the Cycles of Life program, we use um, teachings from compassionate leaders across the world, across the centuries. Everyone from um, the Dalai Lama to Bob Marley to um, Gandhi to Martin Luther King, so many different people that are spreading the same message, but maybe we just haven't had that chance to really make those connections. And lastly, again, I just want to end with how do we exercise the mind, body, and spirit? Well, for me, it was creating a summer program. I was able to be supported through the Office uh, for Community Health at UNM. And there's over 40,000 students in higher education right now in the state of New Mexico. Think of if we had a university institution that supported this type of work. Think about how much positivity, how much um, impact we can make but just by changing the way that we educate people. So light, love, and renewal. I think of light as information, love as creation, and renewal as regeneration. And it's built here in, in Albuquerque, believe it or not. If we know this has always been this way for all indigenous people. I want to end with a quote. Our sorrows and wounds are, are healed only when we touch them with compassion. And that was made by Shakyamuni Buddha over 2,500 years ago. And I just want to end with that. Thank you all so much for your time.